Hey guys, I'm back here at the uh, Salon Guy studio and we've got a great uh, model for you here. This is that perfect haircut for a client that is wearing her hair bob length and says to you, I'm ready for a 10. I'm ready for something completely different. I want to look radically different and I'm ready for something great. So this is going to be a, uh, a short pixie type of haircut with a with an asymmetric feel to it, we're gonna be doing a round graduation underneath with a disconnected top. So I'm looking forward to giving you this technique. All right guys, this is the, uh, the first sectioning pattern for this haircut. This is gonna be through here, all your undercut. This is gonna be taken quite short into the head. Because it's mannequin here, I'm not gonna go quite as short as I would if she were a person. So I will be a little bit longer, just preserving some of that so it doesn't get pokey. But here's your sectioning pattern. From the parietal ridge in the front down to a uh, below the crown in the back into a V and we're going to be working from the right side coming all the way to the to the left side uh, with your round graduation and then we'll come from the right and cross over and that will be the undercut and then we'll work to the top. So this section is going to be your first section and as short as you make it is as how tight the, uh, the undercut could be. So if this, again, if this were a real person and I wanted to take this quite close, I would take this right into the head that short. But since it is mannequin hair and it'll grow straight out, we're gonna leave a little bit more length for the sake of the, uh, the mannequin and the finished product. So I'm gonna come standing in back of my section. My fingertips will be pointed upward and out and my knuckles will be coming inward. I'm starting with about two and a half inches at the top down into very closeness by my knuckle. So I'm going to cut from shorter, from longer at the top, and now I'm going to come closer into the ear area. So as I release that, let's look at it. And you can see it wants to poke, but we're going to, we'll take care of that at the end. But that's, see, we've got a little bit of length and we're working into closeness. So now we're going to take a second section directly in back of that. I'm going to comb this hair completely out of the way, keeping very neat sections. And I'm going to comb that hair out at 90 degrees. My fingertips are pointing upward. And my knuckles are closer to the head. So again, we call this round graduation because the head is a rounded shape. And we're moving with head shape. So as I work my way down, I'm creating a rounded graduation. You know, like this, it's rounded, coming in. So again, we're working our, our length at the top, fingertips out, knuckles in, and I'm coming down towards the nape area. So I, if you, you can't really, might not see, but my body position is directly in back of this section and the hair is coming closer to the nape area. So I'm going quite close down here at the nape as I work my way down. And this is all being cut close to the head and you wanna keep that very close. You don't wanna pull out at this point because that would give us too much weight here. We wanna keep that nice and slender. Okay, so you can kinda of see where we're going here. Um, a little bit of length here for softness and then a working or a really nice tight shape. Again, this is an undercut, so the hair is gonna come on top of it. So I'm working my way down from the top in a diagonal back section. And what we're doing right now is just removing the weight. Again, the exciting part of when you're cutting hair, especially when you have a client that trusts you and wants you to try something different. Um, that's my favorite thing to do. And I find that when I'm behind the chair, if I can make a mark like that and send a client happily out of the salon with a super big change on their hair. And it doesn't mean that that's what you have to do all the time, but when someone's bored and you can take them out of that boredom and put them into something that's very dynamic, uh, that's a, a really big um, thing for hairdressers to do because it creates business. Okay, so I'm working down on the bottom. I'm working very close into the nape area. 
So you're always taking these rounded sections and our goal is to work our way over to the left hand side corner. That's where our goal is going to be. We're working this, this graduation over to the opposite side. I always come back to the top and I'll say it over and over. Fingertips out and knuckles come in. Combing the hair out at 90, fingertips out, knuckles in. Coming down to the nape area, you're following that rounded shape. You're coming right into the head and we're creating a very tight nape area. And this is really fun, guys. You're, you know, this type of shape, this technique here for the undercut, this can be used on a woman's short haircut like we're doing right now. You can use this on men. I use this all the time on men's hair cutting. And the great thing about it, it's just cutting for shape. You can see what's happening. The best thing to do sometimes when you're working, stand away from your work and really look at what you're creating so you can see dimension. You could see what's actually happening in the shorter areas of the hair. And you're, you're, you're creating dimension in the shape of your cut from tightness out to length. So following that same pattern, I'm almost arriving at that point where we're going to be moving to the opposite side. But I'm taking that section in the rounded format that we're using and following that same pattern, fingertips out, knuckles in. I like to use the fine end of the comb when I'm working with short shapes like this for complete control because when you're using the finer end of the comb, you're going to grip the hair a little bit more and you're going to find yourself being more accurate. So some people are not all that big about being precise. They like um, a very looser feel and I do too. Um, but when I'm in an accurate position with a haircut, I want to be very accurate. I want it to be spot on. So I, I think that there's all different kinds of hairdressers and, um, and there's all different kinds of cutting hair, techniques to cut hair that really allow you to be free and more um, of a looser type of cutting technique. But I'm, I come from a, dis a discipline background. And I love to control what I'm creating. And at this point, it's accuracy, it's cleanliness with partings, it's keeping everything in control. And another thing that I've been really pressing to a lot of the students, people that I teach, um, is being a visionary hairdresser. A visionary hairdresser sees a client and really can almost exactly see what they would look like before you even get near them. Um, I love doing that. I think that it's not something you can always teach, um, but it is something that when you practice it, and it takes time, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. You have to study facial shape, body, body shape, texture, length of hair. All those things are super important. And, but you just got to have a, a great mind that can see the art of hairdressing. Okay, so here we are. We've just arrived. I'll take her off to show you. We started in the very front where we took a diagonal back section and worked those sections all the way over to this corner, coming all the way into this corner. So now what I have to do is I have to connect the, the left side with what I just did on the right. So what I have to do is I have to recreate all that, that closeness in the same format as I did on the other side. If I stood the way I did on the opposite side, it would be very difficult for me to go and have my fingertips out and my knuckles in. So the body position always tells you where you should be. So I'm going to drop her down a little bit and I'm going to take that same section, a diagonal back section, and I'm going to get this all out of the way.
keep the head a little bit more straighter. I'm going to come in now in front of her. And instead of my fingertips being out, my knuckles will be out now. My knuckles will be out to leave that length a little bit here, but my fingertips will be pointing inward and going towards that close back into the back. So it's a little bit more opposite, but as you can see, I don't know if you can see it completely, I'm standing correctly, my body is correct, I'm combing from the underneath, my fingertips are pointed in, and now I'm going to cut from shorter out to longer. So as I comb it down, I'll look on both sides. And sure enough, I'm very, very accurate with my first section. About two and a half inches here into almost closeness by the ear. So my second section follows the same pattern. You're going to comb the hair to your body. Your fingertips are pointed inward. Your knuckles come out. And I'm working from shorter out to longer. You know, it's really important that you recognize where your body stands while you're creating these shapes. Because doing hair for four decades right now, I have never had to really, and my back really hasn't been affected by how I've cut hair, but I've seen hairdressers that cut hair in very odd and awkward positions. And I don't think they'll hit four decades if they continue cutting like that. So I find it very important to be in the right place and your finger positions are all just as important as when you're creating these shapes. So it's coming out. Coming down the neckline, pulling the hair out 90. Fingertips pointing in towards the nape area. Here I'm at the nape area right now, combing the hair out at 90 and pointing right inward. Because if you pull out there, you're going to have too much weight on the bottom. You want this to fit nice and close to the head. So now I'm at the nape area and I'm cutting that right in, connecting to what I ended with on the opposite side. Okay, following that through, you can see there's not as much hair on the left side after you've completed that as it would be on the right. But you want to still keep all this elevation up, knuckles out, fingertips in, combing that hair to your body at 90 degrees. Okay. Let's do this in two. You know, there's times when you can do, take larger sections. When it comes to these short, great haircuts, you know, it's better to really take your time and watch these things come into fruition. So I'm combing this out to me, to my body at 90, fingertips pointing inward. I'm coming right to the back where that'll cross over. So I'm picking up hair that was previously cut on the opposite side. You can see that just will perfectly blend in. Coming down <clears throat> the neck, still elevated up, and crossing over into the back center where I will connect the undercut. So you can see the shape is consistent on both sides. I'm just checking a little bit of hair here that I saw was a little heavier. Taking this in and just making sure that we're connected on both sides, which we are. Okay, so that's, that's your undercut. We are gonna refine it a little bit. For me, on a person, um, that's where there's a little bit of something that I add to 
the undercut of my, of my cuts is I like to take a little bit of weight out of them. So I'll come in with a blending shear, uh, different than a thinning shear. This is a 10, this is a 20 tooth blending shear, which is just gonna remove some weight. And I'm gonna do that by scissor over comb. So I'm gonna come in and just hold that hair out and work my way up from the bottom up to the top. Even in the heavier part of the hair on the top area, I like to go in there and just remove some of that weight and really cause it to be a lot closer and a lot softer. So I'm just doing this through the whole undercut and on a real person, um, this will keep it from growing in as quickly. It'll help it lay flatter and it also takes a lot of the bulk out of the hair, especially if the hair is thicker. Um, I really do. Some people are, you know, finical about blending shears. They don't use them as much. I think every shear and every tool that you have that makes your job a lot easier is a good tool to have. And this is really, for me, a really nice way to slenderize bulky hair. Most of this is going to be covered with hair on top of it, so I'm not so worried about it. And uh, so that's why I'm coming in and just making sure that this hair has been lightened up. Coming right to the center back, starting at the nape area. Coming in and just removing that weight. When you're thinning, when you're scissor over combing, you want to move your comb and your scissor at the same time. Here again, corner of the nape area, hold that hair out from the head and let those blending shears just remove comfortably the weight that you don't like. Wrapping up on the sides. You want to make sure that you don't go too deep into the hair. I'm really working the ends of the hair. That's where the bulk is. You know, it's, it's thick all the way through at times, but right now all I want to do is just lighten that up a little bit. So I just keep on moving, holding that hair out from the head and removing that excess weight. Feels good, it's real soft. It's hugging the head closer and it's creating that perfect environment to put a great shape over it. So right now we just dropped down the top. Okay, so the undercut is finished and it's really set up right now for what I want to do on the top. So there's all different ways to create different shapes that you could use on top of this. What we're going to do today is we're going to create the upper shape that's on top of this undercut disconnected from it in layers. So a lot of times people would probably create a graduated shape on top of that. But a lot of times when you do that, you have to remove a lot of weight out of the edges and I'm not looking to do that. So we're gonna work off of a side part and we're gonna move into a slightly asymmetric feeling, uh, but we're gonna do it all in layers. So our first section is a pie shaped section from narrow at the crown to slightly wider in the front, okay? So a layer is 90 degrees up from the head and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lift this up at 90 degrees. And you have to decide how short you would like that shorter side to be. In this case, I'll just hold it in my hands and I'll drop it down over and it's gonna land over the undercut, somewhere below the um, occipital area or even close to it. The occipital is in the back but it follows, you know, I try and follow lines from it so the, the crown length is gonna be your longest length for the entire haircut. That's the tip of my fingers right here, okay? So I'm gonna elevate that out at 90. Fingertips pointing up, and we're gonna point cut down into the front. I've got that length, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna point cut right down into the front of her hairline knowing that the length I choose right now 
in the front will be the shorter length in the bang area. So let's drop it down and look at it. So you can see that's a really nice length. It's coming in somewhere below the eye area, cheek, right above the cheek area. So it's going to be very soft. That's your first section, and that guide is a traveling guide now. So I'll go a little bit further in back of it. Again, I'm standing behind her. I'm going to take those two sections together, two, uh, two going into one, point cutting down into the front area. So now, right here, guys, this is very important. Right now, I'm following a rounded convex layer, which means it's not going to be over-directed up. We're going to follow the head shape. And I'm going to go slightly shorter right there, right there. So when it drops down, it won't be heavy. Okay, so I'm coming in, I'm really almost covering the undercut, which is really, which is sweet, it's beautiful. But look at how nice and soft that comes in. There's no hard line there. And the only reason why that's happening is because we're doing it in layers. Okay, so I go in back of that. I'm probably right by the ear area right now. I'm going to elevate that hair up at 90. The comb on the head will tell you the angle that you should be combing that hair to. It's not straight up like this. We're on the side of the head at the top, and the comb is telling me comb out from the head. And we're going to slowly cut down into a rounded shape as I work my way down. I'm coming out from the head at 90 degrees on an angle following the head shape. Point cutting for softness. If you cut it blunt, it'll make it a lot stronger. And when you point cut into it, you're creating a very soft edge. So when you drop it down, <clears throat> you can see where that line is coming, but there's no hard edges at all. Okay, almost into the center. <clears throat> I always take a little bit of what I just cut and some new, some new hair. So I'm working backward, again on that angle, working from longer at the crown to shorter, following a convex rounded layer that's gonna rest right over the undercut. Okay, now I'm at the very, very back, the center. This will be my last section for the left side. Okay, we're coming out, we're point cutting down. I'm elevating this hair out from the head at 90 and cutting a rounded shape. If you pull out like this, that'll be way too long and it'll drop below the occipital and you don't want that type of shape. You want it to rest at or a little slightly below, not a lot. Okay, so that's really coming in nicely. So what I need to do here is continue working that section all the way to the ear. So I'll take another section coming onto the right side, take some of what I had just cut, elevate that out at 90, keep it clean, keep your sections very, very clean so you know exactly where you're at. I'm standing in back of my section, there's my length at the crown, and we're cutting a rounded shape into the lower portion, right above the occipital bone. Again, body position plays a huge role in following this haircut. So I'm in back of my section right now, guys. I'm not bending. I'm following that section into a rounded layer right above the occipital bone. And I just made my way to my ear. 
So I made my way all the way over to the ear. This will be the last section. Longer at the crown. And closer towards the end of that section. As we wrap this up, I've got the front section now. And what I want to do is I want to create some length through the front. So as I'm ending up by the ear area, I'm going to move sections towards the front, but I'm going to comb them back to the ear and over direct backwards. So you want to keep the length at the crown longer. And I'm going to over direct the hair back to me. And you'll see the length slowly get longer into the front. So we're coming in front of that section, over directing it back to the ear. And you're going to see that hair get longer, but we're keeping it soft by point cutting into the front. And working our way into the longest length at the crown, you don't want to go too short there. You've got to preserve that length. Last section. Bring it all into that guide that you've created. So I'll just show you now how nicely that technique created that asymmetry. So if you wanted that to be extreme, you could leave that long. You could leave that just as is and blow this out and you can have a very extreme asymmetric shape. I'm going to connect my front a little bit and soften it. I'm going to utilize the length that I have right here on the left side, my shortest side, and I'm going to overdirect that hair over to it. In the Paul Mitchell culture that we work with, we call this across the street. You're, if the part is the street, you're overdirecting the hair to the opposite side of the street over here. So I'm going to utilize that length and over direct the hair to me and go from shorter to longer. Number two section, a little higher and a little wider. That's going to come over to the opposite side of the head. And whenever you do this, remember over direction pushes hair away from where you're creating it. So it's shorter to longer on this side. And when I release it, it'll go slowly, softly to the other side. Third section and last in the front. This will come over. I'm going to elevate up in the air. I don't want that to be heavy. And I'm going to connect that section, working from shorter to longer, so that that connection is better and it's a soft, softer profile. So now what I want to do is I want to comb it and check it. Let's check to see that it's blending nicely. Is there anything I need to trim in the very front where it lives? And presently I don't. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to blow dry this haircut and then we're going to dry cut it to put the finishing touches on it. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is just do a little refining. We're going to point cut a little deeper to lighten up some of the hair because it's still got a lot of bulk there, but I like the shape very much. So I'm going to start 
at the crown and come on a diagonal and just break up into the hair a little bit, a little deeper. And all this is doing is just lightening it up and giving a little bit more softness to the shape. And I'll work from the back towards the front over directing because we don't want to cut into that length too deeply. So I'm just going to cut in and even down lower, I'm going to break up into that hair a little bit. Work my way forward, but over directing the hair to me. And the longer the hair is, you can, you can point a little deeper. Maintaining the length where you need it, which is at the crown. And you can cut into the sides. Just a little bit, just to remove some of the heaviness there. Remember always when you have a heavier side like this, you just want to get that hair a little bit further back so you don't cut into the shape. And you can see how nicely that starts to slenderize it down. You know, it just takes the weight out and makes it lie beautifully. So now we'll go the opposite direction, holding that hair up and pointing into that hair. It's always good to really have your, yourself mapped out so you know exactly where you need to place you know, your scissors to go into the hair correctly and pick up the hair that needs to be cut opposed to just grabbing hair and hoping for the best. I'm working my way forward. I'm standing from the back of her head. And this, I, I over-directed forward so I can come a little deeper into the side area. Just checking the shape out. I'm a little bit longer in the very bottom, so I'm just going to lift it and remove some of that length on the edges. I don't want a hard line, so that's why everything's being done up in the air in a layer, opposed to a graduation. Oh, lift this up. And really just work some of that point cutting into the very bottom. So you really look at your haircut when you're finishing it, and that's where all the beauty comes in. You want to do your, all your last minute tweaking. And my last bit, I really feel needed to, once I saw it dry, I needed to just shorten a little bit of this corner to make it that much better. So I'm going to lift this up. And I'm just going to point cut into the bang area. Just create a little bit less weight there. A little lighter. Three of those sections up in the air. Now this hair could be ironed flatter than it is, or you can leave the body in it, depending on you know, which way you feel would really represent the finished look the best. You could curl this and give it an evening look. So it really is very versatile, and it's really up to the person who's wearing it and where they're wearing it. It could be very just every day, which I love, and then it can also be dressed up. Because a lot of people say the short hair, you know, is you're stuck in one way. You're really not. I don't think any hair any longer is, has to be worn one way. Our tools and our products are really essential for creating those specific looks. Sometimes it's just the way your haircut falls that you find your, your greatest looks with a haircut. Okay guys, so this is the, the, the finished haircut, uh, the finished makeover. 
I hope this haircut inspires you to look at people differently and want to try something that's going to pull people out of their box because every time you do, I guarantee you'll make that mark, you'll gain 10 new clients, and you'll make this client very, very happy. See you next time.